Hello, uh, we are uh, uh, pleased to have with us uh, Professor Arindama Singh from the Department of uh, Mathematics. Uh, and uh, he will uh, discuss with us, you know, research in uh, mathematics and uh, aspects of research associated with, uh, you know, uh, student life and how it uh, uh, interacts with, you know, their research at uh, in their department and so on. Uh, Professor Arindama Singh uh, has a PhD in mathematics from IIT Kanpur, and he has been here uh, at IIT Madras as a faculty for more than two decades now, since uh, 1995, and has a lot of, uh, you know, rich experience in uh, working with students. Uh, uh, in, uh, in actually various capacities because he has also held several uh, uh, positions in the institute uh, which deal with uh, you know, uh, critical aspects of uh, uh, student life here. Uh, and incidentally, uh, you should also look him up uh, on the internet. Uh, he is a very interesting personality. I had the opportunity of looking up a lot of information on, uh, about him. Uh, so if you get a chance, please do look him up. Uh, he has uh, written a lot of uh, things about uh, his experiences in life in general in addition to his uh, professional uh, uh, activities. Uh, so, thank you for joining us. Uh, so, I would uh, uh, like to start by uh, looking at uh, this aspect that, you know, uh, at least in uh, uh, engineering background, we tend to have, you know, in any engineering division, we have areas of uh, activity which are considered traditional areas of research. Uh, in, in mathematics, uh, is there such a thing? Is there such a concept like, you know, these are the traditional areas of research which uh, are there and then... Uh, uh, and, and which have been there for a long enough time, but there is still research going on in it and, uh, and therefore there is a lot of literature that people can look at and uh, uh, you know, engage themselves against. Yes, uh, as usual, mathematics is uh, in fact uh, living traditionally. So, okay. you may say the old areas uh, never die, Okay. Uh, but new areas being added due to applications and some other problems coming up in daily life. So, like uh, we have the geometry we started from Euclid or so, it is still living. Okay. And research is going on in geometry okay. in various aspects of it. Uh, similarly, we have analysis, which is very traditional, uh, algebra. So these are some of the branches. In fact, these comprise the whole of mathematics. Uh, any branch of mathematics you take, it is somewhere related to one of these, one of or these. even all of these. Okay, okay. So they are still living. However, in India, sometime back. Uh, Fluid dynamics took care of almost everything. Okay. Any department you go, there will be some people working in fluid, fluid dynamics. dynamics. Yeah. But that is an engineering subject. So, slowly it is dying down from mathematics departments. Okay, okay. Uh, and some pure maths that is being established everywhere. So, okay. that is the trend now. Okay. So, new areas of research would be, yes. I mean, uh, in, in what, would, what, would be, what would constitute like, you know, areas yeah. which have sort of come up only very recently that uh, really maybe say, let's say in the 5-10 okay. years time frame that uh, many, maybe there are many groups yeah. interested in looking at. So after this advent of computers, uh, new areas like numeric analysis, okay. then uh, computer science related mathematics, mm -hmm. for example, discrete mathematics, and data structures, theory of computation, uh, then image processing, and anything related to numerical, like lin numerical linear algebra, for example. Mm -hmm. So these areas have come up recently. So you are yourself in fact an uh, expert in numerical yes. analysis and uh, I am also related uh, to one of those. Yeah, computer science, yeah. Uh, theoretical computer science yeah. kind of activities. So okay, so these are the uh, newer areas that uh, in, yeah. in mathematics yeah. that people work on. Uh, actually, uh, okay, so in this sense, in fact, uh, if you look at uh, uh, maybe students coming into mathematics de uh, department, uh, what sort of backgrounds do they come in? I mean, are they only, or are they almost uniformly, uh, you know, bachelor uh, or BSc in uh, mathematics kind of background or do you see different, do you see enough engineering? students moving to mathematics uh, in the in the PG programs? Not many engineers coming to mathematics, uh, but there are one or two. Okay. In, uh, in every one or two years, we get one or two engineering students who show interest in coming to mathematics and they also do good research after that, we find. But uniformly, it is MSc from mathematics. Okay. That is our intake. Okay, okay, okay. So in some of the places where mathematics and statistics both are there, so, MSc statistics people also come okay. for doing research. Okay, okay. So, uh, in, in, in terms of the students coming in, um, uh, they pr probably come with a you know, wide range of different uh, institutions from which they have been educated for their yeah. BSc and MSc uh, and maybe as you said, you know, one or mm. two engineering students and whatnot. Uh, when they come in, uh, in terms of settling in uh, to doing a research kind of a program mm. here in uh, uh, mathematics department here, uh, are there uh, specific issues that you see students facing uh, as they settle in, in the, maybe the early part of their uh, uh, graduate uh, or postgraduate uh, life uh, here? 
in you know in terms of technically adjusting to what is required here uh, and so on yeah there is uh, in fact our entrance should be able to take care of these issues okay but it doesn't because of various reasons we have to lower the uh, or um, narrow down the scope so that it should be it should be accessible to many people so in that sense we keep our entrance uh, in such way that it is common to almost all the universities in india which are doing in the bsc programs so that way we get students from almost all the places and then we have the problem of bringing their standard up so that they will be almost equal in one or two years and that's a gigantic task it's in one year it is not possible we know but then we have to give some courses which will be very uh, basic to them so that is the idea okay uh, and then uh, during this uh, uh, coursework period they take the courses which are uh, Uh, useful for their research also not only on the general mathematics but also narrowing down to their research area so at least one or two courses are given from the research area mm-hmm. so that they will be going faster okay uh, so this idea of coursework is really very important for the research students mm-hmm. so that they will be equalized over one or two years and then they will also be uh, earning some expertise in their narrow down area okay um in terms of any other uh, uh, preparation in terms of you know okay so basically you're saying maybe the rigor is what uh, yes. they they have yes. to pick up on when they yes. come come in and then mm-hmm. it takes some maybe a year or two to settle into this uh, uh, rigor um of course when we think of uh, you know basic sciences you know including say physics chemistry mathematics and so on uh, especially with respect to mathematics uh, uh, the Uh, i mean at least the perception is that you know maybe uh, the industry uh, general industry that uh, that is out there which employs a lot of uh, people uh, to what degree does that industry uh, i mean see uh, show interest in graduates of uh, mathematics or or in what con- uh, what uh, you know uh, aspects of industry uh, is there you know a nice fit between people who are doing an, an advanced degree in mathematics an ms or a phd degree mm-hmm. Uh, and the what the industry might desire or even say some section of the corporate world may desire yeah. so the traditionally people are thinking that industry might take who are uh, doing well in fluid dynamics mm-hmm. but that is not happening in india okay so there are many industries who use these concepts and uh, food products or even uh, their processes can be optimized by using these methods but they don't ask for it okay mm-hmm. and when we go for them they are also a bit reluctant because okay. there is a fear of losing their jobs okay okay or some such okay uh, okay 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 uh, but in computer science areas uh, our students are really doing some good job they are going for r&d sections uh, recently one person who graduated in uh, complexity theory went for uh, this job for example in dell systems so there are some areas like this where they are able to go but it is really uh, again confined to the r&d sector mm-hmm. it's not going to the productive sector okay r&d sector so In the okay. Oh, okay okay yeah. okay okay but what about uh, let's say uh, i mean let's say uh, the uh, world associated with uh, you know all the stock markets and yeah, things finance, like that yeah. uh, finance so we are not having any expertise in that okay there is nobody in actuarial sciences okay but it, that is one area where okay. mathematicians can be useful mm-hmm. but, but in you, abroad they are really yeah they seem jobs. to be using yeah. that i mean even yeah. uh, from what i hear even say physicists and what yes, not yes. get uh, absorbed by yeah. uh, the financial sector mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they seem to be doing a lot of yes, analysis yes. or at least the tools maybe they learn yes. are uh, suitable mm-hmm. for those kinds of positions so that's not something that you're seeing that does not yet uh, cast off here <laughs> okay 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 is it just that they are i mean is it just that they are not aware that there are enough uh, people here with that kind of an expertise or uh, no but we do not have expertise okay, in okay, our okay. department for example there is no person who is expert in the actuarial sciences okay 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 fine fine um the uh, uh, okay so in, in let's say in in your uh, uh, you know experience with looking at students over all these years uh, in general you know in, in institutions we have some metrics of uh, you know how people are progressing uh, what courses they have done what grades they have got what uh, publications they have made etc but in in general in a more holistic sense um, uh, especially t- uh, for someone who is just you know considering coming in and so on uh, what would you suggest are uh, good ways to measure 
uh, their progress in research. So that for their own satisfaction also, they understand that in fact they are progressing in research, uh, especially let's say with respect to mathematics, for mm -hmm. example, do you think there are ways in which they should uh, think of themselves, analyze their uh, mm -hmm. uh, situations? See, there is one objective factor which is, uh, uh, well, publications in good journals. Okay. So though it looks very objective, there is subjective factor in determining which one is good and okay, which one is okay, bad. Okay. But that is almost settled. Okay. If you ask any general person whether this journal is good or not, he will be able to tell you. Mm. Even if he publishes in that, he may say also it is a bad journal. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. so there is some sort of understanding. Understanding. In that. Uh. Uh, so number of papers that come in good journals, that is a good metric. Well, uh, okay. metric. Mm. Uh, but individually, when a person uh, discusses with the supervisor, the supervisor knows how much progress he has done. Okay, okay, okay. Or uh, about the, it's basically not only that area where he is doing research, but the peripheral areas. Okay. How much he has acquired about the knowledge about the peripherals. Okay. So that after he finishes his PhD, he will be able to really do research on his own. Okay. Uh, there are some measures like one publication. Um, there is a major factor there in the publications. So one is whether somebody has solved a long-standing problem. Okay. That is a good measure of thing or how far he has progressed towards that. Mm -hmm. Another is if he has not solved a long-standing problem, whether he has done something which will give rise to a long-standing problem. Oh, okay, fine. I that is, that created is also a long, nice either, either solved yes. a long-standing problem or created yes. a long-standing yes. problem. <laughs> problem that will stand for So, these time. are the two things which okay. are very good okay. measures. Okay. Uh, and the third one is anyway we have to use always which is the number of uh, papers in good journals. Okay. So these are some uh, yes, yes. Um, in uh, uh, especially with respect to mathematics uh, on a sort of a mundane uh, thick concept. Uh, you know, when students come in, they have come from, uh, you know, academic setting where they do courses and so on. They come and they are now getting into a research, research setting. Uh, generally, uh, in all uh, areas of research, we, we always feel that, you know, interaction is a very uh, important, uh, technical interaction is a very important yeah. way in which uh, people grow as research, researchers. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that, you know, working with the people in the group, uh, working with the guide, uh, meeting the guide, etc., plays mm -hmm. a very important role. Um, in mathematics where you know there's a lot of thought process involved lot of uh, you know uh, uh, it's very in, in many ways a very internal thing we're not often not running an experiment sort of uh, how important do you see this role of a student advisor meeting how often should you think they should meet uh, well, ideally they should meet every day over coffee okay uh, because then mathematics do not have any labs okay where they can interact with the things of the world Okay. It is really only communicative. It's a linguistic entity. Okay. So they have to go on communicating. Okay. By that only they will get experience. There is no other way. Okay, okay, okay. But what we find is usually they are given some jobs and they come to meet the supervisor after one or two weeks. Mm. And then they spend one or two hours, get some ideas and go away. Okay. That way it will not happen. Mathematics will not happen. Okay. Uh, but sometime you may need that seclusion. Because if some idea has really struck, you need also time to get it into work. Okay. So sometimes it may be okay, not always. Okay. Ideally, it should be every day. One should meet. Okay. Tell something about what has happened. Uh huh. And then go back. Okay. Okay. And uh, what sort of uh, uh, characteristics you think people should have uh, to be good mathematicians? I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, in the sense. Uh, how can how can someone you know uh, uh, of course see one is an inclination you tend to solve some problems and you feel comfortable with the idea that I understand but over and above that is there some visualization capability that you I mean what should a person see in themselves and say okay this I'm I'm, I'm able to do this probably I'm good at mathematics other than just being able to solve the problem. Well, if you look at mathematicians, there are all sort of people in in that community. Okay. <laughs> you can't say that for mathematics one should be like this or that. okay. But certainly they are not fools. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so that is one characteristic. Okay. That they should be intelligent. Okay. Uh, they should try to find out if there is something to go deeper or not. Okay. So that is one characteristic which really characterizes them. Okay. They are not satisfied just looking at the surface. Okay. They would like to go deeper. Okay. What is the pattern behind it? Right. So then so not if a one not has that interest, uh -huh. then probably it can be sharpened. 
Okay. But if it doesn't have that interest, it uh, it cannot be a mathematician. Okay. So that <laughs> thing that you know, it shouldn't be a superficial yes. thing. You have to just get yes. much, much, yes. much deeper uh, into the thought yeah. process behind yeah. that solution. Okay. Uh, what sort of? I mean, I I know you touched upon this a little bit. What sort of? Uh, uh, especially with you know. Uh, in, in both certainly in engineering and I'm sure in mathematics too, when you say an MS or a PhD kind of a degree, automatically the thinking is that this person is now an expert in a narrow area. So there's, there's some kind of a specialization associated with it. So uh, in that sense, uh, what sort of positions are people who get you know, MS uh, PhD degrees from uh, mathematics department, what sort of positions do you see them going to in, in recent times uh, and where do you think are the possibilities for such? Uh, see, at least from IITs when you get one PhD in mathematics, you do not expect uh, him to be very narrow. Okay. Because they are associated with the tutorial classes, okay. with the B.Tech okay. classes. Okay, okay, okay. So, they, they are having a lot bigger background mm -hmm. than other places. Okay. Where this uh, STTA concept is missing, mm. probably they, they the are students are also the, missing that. Okay, okay, fine. They are missing that. Okay. Yeah. So, here it is a nice learning experience. Here it is a nice learning it. experience and they get first hand uh, okay. experience of teaching also. Okay. How to communicate mathematics uh, by verbal communication. So, that is important. They can write, but they will not be able to speak sometimes. Okay. So, this helps them to speak. That way, they are better compared okay. to other places. Uh, but then, that is not everything. So, they have to, once they are really narrowed down, because IITs, there are only 17 or 18 IITs and we get less number of students compared to the other places. So, everywhere it is not possible. So, they, there is an expectation they are narrowed down to some particular area. But then, uh, it should be possible for them to take up any other thing later. Because once, that is what one person asked me once, that if I come to do MSc here, what will I gain? I am not going to get any job directly after MSc. So, at that time, there was no job even in the market okay. for the mathematics students. Now, at least there are uh, some employment for doing research or something. At that time, there was no possibility of research also. Very few <laughs> places were having the research uh, positions. So, my typical answer was, whatever okay. job they go, they will be able to do it. Okay. Provided they have the interest. Okay. So, these mathematicians uh, pick up this nasty habit that they okay. want to reinvent everything. Okay. So, if something is done in the book, uh. they will not be satisfied. Okay. They would like to do it themselves again. Okay. <laughs> Though that will be a guideline. Okay. So, this reinvention is also hated in some of the industries. Okay. Because they have a particular process. Okay. And if this person does not follow the process, tries to topple with it or create problems, mm. then lot of things get disturbed. Okay. So, that is the only thing they have to be conscious when okay. they go to do any other job okay. outside the academia. Okay. But, what but sort usually of, the yeah. position is academic position. Academic positions is the most positions. teaching positions. And then in industries, R&D positions. R&D positions. Yeah. These are the… These are best ones. Okay, Best okay. fitted for them, really. Okay, <laughs> fine, fine. And uh, uh, okay, maybe uh, a sort of in, in closing, I just wanted to get a sense of, uh, you know, a lot of students, uh, I mean, in fact, there are students who finish, you know, even high school who consider mathematics as uh, something that they are very mm -hmm. interested in, passionate about. Uh, maybe undergrads who consider it in uh, greater, uh, you know, enthusiasm for it. Um, is there some, uh, what sort of advice you would give for people who are aspiring to become uh, MS and PhD students uh, to go on to get higher degrees in uh, mathematics? What sort of advice would you give them? Well, uh, once they do their MSc, they should be able to find out in which area they are really interested. If they are really interested in some area, they should be able to produce some such new things, which may not be very big thing which if one expert sees in that area, he will say, okay, it is nothing. But it should be, there should be a deviation from the usual curriculum. Okay. One such a thing is there, I would encourage him to go for doing research in mathematics. Okay. If so it is not mm -hmm. there, then it may not be worth doing. Because he will do the usual things, he will come for teaching and so on. Okay. But not be able to really contribute to mathematics. Okay. So, you are saying that this is this would be one nice way for them to gauge whether they are, yes. they are uh, you know, in the right uh, process to be yes. going ahead yes. for uh, higher degrees in yeah. uh, mathematics. So, uh, so they would have to, at least some small number of new things yes, they should uh, yes. start dabbling with uh, yes. so that uh, an expert feels that they are you know, yeah. comfortable with that So, concept. you would like to see the playing thing that he really okay. plays with mathematics. Okay. Not okay. only does the conventional things, okay. but he is very comfortable with it and he does something there. Okay, okay, okay. 
So, the, so, so, okay, so, that, so that's your advice. So, before they just jump into a uh, master's yes. degree or a PhD degree, they should first gauge whether they are, yes. you know, sort of in the right frame of yeah. mind yeah. for it. And then on that basis, yeah. uh, proceed. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Arindama Singh. Okay, uh, it was welcome. a pleasure meeting you. And uh, I think it's a very nice uh, advice uh, for, uh, because mostly people, we look at engineering students mm -hmm. uh, more often. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of people consider mathematics, but they don't know, you know where to take yeah. it. And I think this, these are nice words of advice for them to uh, ponder about before they make uh, their decisions and look at their life in uh, graduate school here. And thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.